What's up guys, Josh Plunt here. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about some history behind the ketogenic diet, as well as some pros and cons to this popular diet as well. No diet is perfect and the ketogenic diet is definitely no exception. And with that being said, let's get started. As many of you already know, the ketogenic diet was used as a treatment for those with epilepsy, which is true. In the 1920s, Dr. Russell Wilder had coined the ketogenic diet after he saw the success he had with children with epilepsy. So so in the 1940s, they had documented the ketogenic diet as an actual treatment for children with epilepsy. But what many of you might not know is that nutrition being the cause of some chronic diseases dates back much, much further than that. In 400 BCE, a Greek doctor by the name of Hippocrates had witnessed a man having seizures for five days straight. And for five days, he wasn't able to eat and he was hardly able to drink anything. But on the sixth day, his seizures had actually stopped. And that, my friends, is what began hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years research that overfeeding might be the cause for epilepsy. Now, during testing, they obviously didn't want to starve children for five days straight just so they can get some results, and that's where the ketogenic diet comes in. They were looking for other ways that they can not only reduce the amount of calories taking in per day, but also reduce the amount of inflammation that was caused within the body. When you're following the ketogenic diet, 75% of your daily calories are gonna come from fat, 20% are gonna come from protein, and 5% are gonna come from carbohydrates. So what happens when you reduce your carbohydrates down to 5%? Well, your body's going to first burn through your glucose and glycogen storage, and your glycogen storage is gonna be the sugar storage found in your liver and in your muscles. Now, without glucose or glycogen, your body is gonna to start to break down lean muscle mass to get its fuel in a process called gluconeogenesis, which is bad because we don't want to lose our lean muscle mass and that's where ketogenesis comes in during the process of ketogenesis your body is going to start converting fatty acids from your fat storage into ketones and by converting this fat into fuel it's going to help prevent your body from breaking down that lean muscle mass all right so what are some of the benefits of following the ketogenic diet well weight loss for one and you might be thinking well i thought weight loss was due to going into a calorie deficit because that's what you say on your channel all the time well, that's exactly it, and we're gonna get to that. But first things first, when you burn through all of that glycogen storage, one gram of glycogen holds three grams of water weight. So within the first couple of weeks, when you burn through all of that glycogen, you're also gonna be losing a lot of water weight as well. And that's why it's important to not confuse the two with fat loss and weight loss. Because in the first week, if you lose 10 pounds, that's not gonna be 10 pounds of body fat. A lot of that is just gonna be water weight. So it's important to understand the difference. And it's also important to keep yourself hydrated if you're following this diet, because again, you are going to be losing a lot of water weight. So by salting your foods and keeping your sodium levels high, is gonna help you absorb that water better to keep yourself hydrated. All right, so taking it back to the calorie deficit, when you're following the ketogenic diet, you're basically put in a position to where you can only eat high satiated foods. So foods that are gonna keep you full and satisfied for longer periods of time. Foods high in protein, fats, and fibers are basically gonna be your entire diet. So if you're put in this position to where you're full and satisfied faster and for longer periods of time, you're less likely to overconsume these calories throughout the day, hence the calorie deficit. All right, now another benefit of the ketogenic diet is gonna be reduced inflammation of the body. Now, many of us have developed intolerances or even allergies to a lot of foods and a lot of foods high in carbohydrates. And because of this, inflammation plays a major role in most, if not all, chronic diseases, including diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and even some cancers. So if you followed this diet before, or if you've known somebody who have followed this diet before successfully, you might've noticed uh, less inflammation in their nose, less brain fog, and even less joint pain. So reducing the amount of inflammation in their joints as well. All right, guys, so there are definitely more benefits to the ketogenic diet than the cons, but what are some cons? For one, this is a very restrictive diet. And what I mean by that is in order to stay in ketosis, which is the goal, you need to be restricting your carbs down to 5% for the day. And if you're gonna be doing that, you need to make sure that you're eating enough fats so they can be converted into ketones and used as an energy source. And in order to hit these numbers perfectly, you need to be looking at the back of the nutrition label so you know what's exactly in the food that you're gonna be eating and weighing all the food for each meal 
so you know exactly how many macros you're gonna be getting for that meal as well. Because if you have too many carbs, it'll pull you out of ketosis. If you don't have enough fat, then you're gonna be sluggish and you're not gonna have enough energy for the day. So this is a very restrictive diet and you pretty much have to hit those numbers to a T if you wanna be successful. And especially if you've never been on a diet before, or if this is your first weight loss journey, that could become overwhelming and more of a burden than anything. All right, and another thing about this diet that is not that appealing is something called the keto flu. And this is something that you get when you first start this diet. Not everybody gets it, uh, but basically you could develop flu-like symptoms because when your body is used to using glucose as its energy source, now it's gonna start using ketones as its energy source. It doesn't really recognize it at first, right? It has to go through that transition period. And during that time, you're gonna be fatigued, possibly a lack of energy, a lack of motivation, some headaches, um, because you're gonna get these flu-like symptoms when you go through that transition period, possibly. Uh, and another thing is that because you're gonna be losing a lot of water weight within the first week, you're gonna become dehydrated. And dehydration could also cause headaches and constipation and congestion. Uh, so all of these flu-like symptoms that you don't want, you could end up getting possibly starting the ketogenic diet. Now, all of this can be avoided. It is a short period of time and not everybody gets it, but there are ways around it by taking the right vitamins and staying hydrated and making sure that you keep your fat levels high quickly and, and reducing the carbs quickly and things like that. It can definitely be avoided, but regardless, it is a short period of time. They are basically just flu-like symptoms uh, and not everybody gets it. All right, guys, whatever your goal is, it's important to understand that there are many approaches to that goal. You do have options. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of testing to figure out which option works best for you. If you follow the ketogenic diet and you follow it to a T, you will be successful. If you take another approach to your goal and you're willing to put in the effort, you will be successful. But it's important to understand that there's not just one approach. You need to test things and figure out what works best for you. And as long as you're willing to put in the effort and willing to be patient and put in the time, you will be successful. Now, if you're interested in the ketogenic diet and this is something that you wanna follow and you wanna dive a little bit deeper into the pros and the cons and the foods to eat and avoid, I do have a keto guide linked in the description box down below, so you are welcome to check that out. All right, guys, I hope this video brought you some value, especially if you're interested in following the ketogenic diet. It is very complicated, so I hope I was able to answer some questions for you. If you have any other questions, make sure you leave it in the comment section down below. And if you did find value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I do appreciate your support. And when you get a moment, make sure you check out those eBooks that I have linked in the description box down below, and I'll see you on the next video.